Hi there, welcome to the Blender Boost YouTube channel. Today we are going to talk about the animation part of this tutorial series. In previous lessons, you learned about modeling balloon, clouds, and adding materials to clouds. If you still didn't watch those tutorials, I will put those links in the description for each lesson. Ok. Now I will go to the camera view. Click on the view menu and go to the cameras, then click on active camera. Or you can press 0 on numpad. Oops. Why I can't see anything? I pressed 0 again. Then I will try pressing numpad 0 and get the camera view. Same problem here. The reason is this camera is not the active camera at this time. Now I will show what happened. I will show the active camera at this time. You can find it this way. Go to view menu and hover on align view. Then select align the active camera to view. Or you can use the shortcut, Ctrl Alt 0. I will go with shortcut Ctrl Alt 0. Now you can see I have been accidentally selected this small part as an active camera. It happened by a mistake. However, I will show you how to fix it. I undo few steps while this part come back. Now select this camera. Then go to the view menu. Hover on cameras and select set active object as camera. Or you can use the shortcut control numpad 0. I will use the shortcut. Now the problem is fixed. You can see the camera view. After that I will set my view to the camera. Now I set what I want to see from the camera. Then I want to bring the camera here. Ok, this is the view what I want to see. Then I will press Ctrl Alt 0. See? My camera comes to view. Now I press N for this side panel and go to view. Then check this camera to view the box. Now you can adjust the view. I will set all objects into the camera frame. Now I deselect this box here. Then press the N key again. Now I will delete one of these clouds. Because I want to make all clouds as one object. You can see here two objects. I will delete this cloud. Then I select this cloud object and press the tab to go to the edit mode. Now I will duplicate clouds for our scene. Let me speed up this duplication process a little bit.
Okay. We created our clouds. Now I am going to animate these clouds. They want to go up to down as a loop. Now let's see how to create it. Select the move tool and grab along the z-axis a little bit like this. Don't grab down too much. After placed clouds like this go to edit mode and duplicate all clouds. Then grab along the z-axis. Then place those above the camera frame. You can see the darker area which is out of the camera frame. Now we need to mark one point which clouds location. Because it will help us to create a seamless animation. For that, I use 3D cursor tool. Now you can mark any point which you can easily understand cloud position. I zoom in a little bit to taking a clear view. I mark this point because it can easily manage. If cannot understand what I am doing, Please keep watching the next step and you will be able to understand what I am doing. Now I have to create a keyframe on the first frame. Go to object properties. Mouse hover top on location values. Then press I to create a keyframe. Then I jump to the last frame clicking on this arrow button. You can change the frame count by typing the number of frames you want to create the animation sequence. Now you will be able to see when I am pressing this arrow button the play jumped to the last frame. You will be able to toggle the first frame and the last frame using these arrow buttons. So on this animation, I want 250 frames to make my animation clip. Then I grab down clouds along the z-axis. Now you will be able to see which we duplicated cloud before. Place this small cloud on the 3D cursor, as we did before. Hover cursor on location values and press I. Now jump to the first keyframe and then again jump to the last frame and keep watching the 3D cursor area. I think you will be able to see some jumping effects like I don, T understand how to say it. But you will get this point. I try to change the last keyframe location and adjust the location. Let me delete this keyframe and we'll create a new keyframe here. Now I keep this small cloud very near to the 3D cursor clearly. You can hold the shift key on the keyboard when dragging. 
Then it will slow your drag speed and it will allow you to make tinny changes. Then don't forget to add a keyframe. Now I will check again seamlessness. But still, have a little seam. Select only the last keyframe. You can identify the selected keyframe which color is yellow. Now I change this Z value. We need to drag up along the Z axis. I reduce this value by pressing the shift key. Then press I and add a keyframe. Now you will be able to see there is no seam when toggling the first and last frame. Now let me play this animation. So, is this a loop? Let's fix this. I jump to the first frame. Sorry for the pressing spacebar. Now select both keyframes like this. Then right click, go to interpolation mode and give it linearly. Now see what happened. Now our cloud loop is ready. We have to go with the rest of the other part. Let's start with the balloon. Balloon needs some bounce effect and little rotation. First I will create a bouncing effect. I bring it here to the graph editor. Or you can bring the dope sheet like this. Now you couldn't see hear anything. Now I want to make this part bounce through the z-axis. Come to object properties and hover over the location area. Make sure to a playhead bring to frame one end, then press I key. Then you will be able to see some new options here. X location, Y location, and Z location. And also you can see some keyframes in the first frame. I need to get a graph editor here. Then you will be able to see like this. Now you should select the Z location here. Because you are going to move the balloon along the Z axis. Make sure your cursor keep in the graph editor. Then I press the N key for this side panel. Then go to the modifier. Then select noise. See how it works. Then you can change these settings and control the effect. Here, you will be able to see changes in the wave. Let's control this as we want. Oops, it has gone when I undo few steps. Now I increase the scale value. 
play and view how it looks like. Then I change the strength value and adjust it as I like. I need to bring the timeline, because it will be easier to jump between the first frame and the last frame. Ok, now I am going to create a mark. Make sure you are in the first frame. Select the 3D cursor. And place it like this. Zoom in the view and you will be able to clearly where is the cursor sticked on. You can click and hold the left click and drag it where you need. I believe you will be able to understand what I am doing. Because sometimes I won't be able to explain very clearly with my English. Ok now jump to the last frame. Now see here. The 3D cursor didn't move anywhere. But the balloon goes up a little bit. Now we need to bring the start point and end point to the same level. Now don't touch 3D cursor and make sure the move tool is selected. I play with these values again. Then I change the cursor location. I think you will easily get the idea. Keep in mind when you change the cursor, go to the first frame. After placing the cursor, go to the last frame. Then if you've do any changes try with offset or phase value. Don't change scale value. Because it does not affect at this time. That value is good for the animation. Do this from time to time and try to get the first frame location and last location to the same level. 3D cursor will help you so much. Let me speed up this process to save you time.
It can take some time, but enjoy it. If you want to change tinny values, press the shift key and hover over the value area, and click and drag left or right. It makes slow down value change speed. Ok, I guess I done it. Now you won't be able to see any gap between the first frame and the last frame. Ok, now we are going to create the rotation part. It also the same as this, but now we want rotation. Make sure you are in the first frame and hove over the rotation and press I. See, now rotation appeared here. Now select Z rotation. Because we need only rotate along the Z axis. Added noise modifier as before. Then I will play. This is how it affects the animation. Ok, let me go to frame 1. I will type the scale value as 25. I guess now you can understand what I am going to do. I will stick this cursor over here. Now I can clearly see the middle edge line. Let me speed up the video.
I play with these values until I can't see a gap between the first frame and the last frame. Okay, we did it. I will join these areas and bring the timeline here. Now play and enjoy. Right, let's meet with the fifth part of this video series which is the color adding part. Let me go and come back again with the next part. Bye and take care.